2000 against uh, a very good player, uh, Simbat Lopetian, who was very positional. And uh, this was Armenian Championship, and I was playing black. And uh, at that time, I was playing Grunfeld, something that uh, I play often even now. And my opponent played the classical Alekhim variation. The knight comes out of e2. A very flexible variation. And at that moment, there was a fashionable line to play with knight on c6 without c5. A strange type of uh, opening. But uh, it was very similar to kind of hybrid of Grunfeld and King's Indian. And I will show it to you. So he went castle, e5, bishop a3, rook e8, uh, d5. This was uh, an unusual move at that moment because uh, bishop f7 was the main theory back then. King f7, queen b3, then you had some games with king f6, f4, bishop h6. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Well, it was a lot of fun for me uh, to play this line. So in the game he went d5. I went uh, knight a5 and bishop d3. So a typical way, uh, has, if he hadn't played uh, bishop a3 and played d5 immediately, would be to play knight a5, bishop d3 and b6. Uh, what black is basically trying to do, he's trying to, if white goes c4, to play c5, and then bring the knight to d6 from b7, and f5, f4, and start the king's Indian business here. Yes. Trying to mate. Or, even sometimes, you know, not to play c5, play knight b7, and try to play for dark squares, exchange the dark bishops. So, just to explain my decision on the next move. So when he played here, I started thinking. I said, I can play b6. Uh, I can play, uh, OK, also c6, of course. But I thought, why not to play bishop f8? If he exchanges the bishops, then uh, I can slowly bring my knight to c5. And therefore, I thought, I'll manage somehow. I will control the dark squares, which is a bit optimistic, but <laughs> I was 18 years old. And of course, the main issue here, if you look at the position, is bishop b4. You don't want to play b6 and have weak pawns. But then I thought, I'll just go c5. Hmm. Bishop f5, queen a5. I have two bishops in a wonderful position. And this is what happened. He played bishop b4, c5, bishop a5, queen a5. And I thought to myself, what's wrong with my opponent? He doesn't understand what's going on. And then he went a4. And I started thinking. The more I was thinking, the more I was understanding that I've just been fooled. Because I have two bishops. And it seems that I will slowly play bishop d6, f5. Yeah. But this bishop has no squares to go. So even, you know, if I manage to play f5, he can always take, play here, and then bring his knight to e3. So without the knight, there is not much point to my position. And white, he can improve the position by just slowly shuffling, bringing his knight to c4. I can never afford to bring out the bishop here, because once the bishops are exchanged, it's even worse with the knight on c4. Yeah. So now I started thinking, and I said, oh my god, this is just bad for me. This is a very difficult position. Although it visually looks, the black has managed to get two bishops and get a complete 
control of the d6 square. Yeah. Uh, of course, I was thinking about some sacrifices at this moment, you know, just to activate the bishop, but it just uh, doesn't really bring a relief because white still slowly develops. And yeah, this was kind of a lesson that uh, some things that seem obvious are, you know, you got to understand that this position, because of bad bishop on c8, black is just slightly worse. So I've tried to, I think I've played uh, some bishop d6 here, or, yeah, so something like this. He slowly shuffled, uh, yeah, he played queen c2, rook f8, king h1. What he basically tries to do is to bring the knight. I went f5 because uh, I didn't see any other moves. Efgf f4, e4, and bishop c4. I managed to <laughs> once again draw the game, as I often did, because I was very resourceful, although my understanding wasn't great, but I think I played something like this. It was rook f2, then queen d8, knight f1. The knight got to e3. My position was difficult, and... Uh, this was a very valuable lesson. Although it seemed to me from the start that this bishop is not good, and my bishop is great, I started understanding this sort of positions that when you don't have a knight to blockade, uh, it, the bishops, uh, when your opponent has a knight, the bishops are generally uh, not so good. Because, for example, if had we had this position Let's, and also the, the big difference that it makes, of course, is that the pawn is here. Had the pawn been on c4, and I didn't have the square, maybe it's still slightly better for white, but not a big deal. Or if white had uh, like a bishop, then this, this wouldn't be so bad, because mm -hmm. uh, the knight doesn't come to c4 this uh, and completely this destroy my harmony here, you know, because once the knight gets here and the pawn gets here, it's just so difficult to, you know, keep the blockade, keep the pawn. He just has uh, all the plans in the world, and I'm just sitting there and waiting for him. And now, can I understand from the beginning that the exchange dark square bishop for the knight is bad? Uh, for that, it's bad for black. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't manage, but uh, generally, I think uh, the, the best thing to do in a position like this, when you're opting for something like this, okay, the knight was on e2, we have to think what is going to be the next plan for me. And will I manage to activate my pieces and uh, get counterplay? Because uh, if visually it seems good for black, uh, but uh, you don't have a plan, and he does have an easy plan, which is, doesn't require much understanding just to shuffle your knights as you were, then you start uh, understanding that uh, practically it's better to be white in such position. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my stream with Kasparov Chess. And for those that don't know me, I'm International Master Ivan Kahalska. And I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat and I can already see some familiar faces. Uh, very nice to have you join in. A big hello to Sven and also to M. Sris, uh, 108 and uh, Vedant and uh, Lauren. Good to see you and uh, thank you for the cheers in Gibraltar. I really appreciate all your support there. It's going to be a tough tournament, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so how is everyone? Have you enjoyed the Christmas and uh, the start to the new year? I hope you're all enjoying it. I had uh, an interesting start. I was in England and then I came back to Norway to where it was super, super cold. 
and uh, yeah, it's good. And uh, now we've got some excellent chess on the horizon because tomorrow, Vikings A starts. And uh, okay, I've got a little quiz for you. Well, not a, not a quiz, but I'm just going to ask your opinions. You're not allowed to choose Magnus, but who is your favorite? Um, I don't have a favorite, so I need your advice. Do you think um, Jordan, Jordan Van Forest is going to perform a miracle again? He might do. Anish. And living unintentionally fast as Anish. That's, I like it. And uh, it's true, Jesse. Christmas should be a week long. I totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, you're not, post radio, uh, you're not allowed to say Magnus. You have to choose someone else. Uh, I do quite like Anish. He, he's a great guy. He's also a hard worker. And uh, I think he's going to be facing Pragananda in the first round. And another game that I'm really looking forward to, it's uh, Vidit against Sam Shanklin. Vidit is one of our ambassadors, so I'm kind of morally cheering for him. But he's also up against Sam Shanklin. And both these players work super hard on the openings. So I really like to see how they're doing. Uh, Grand Niels. Yeah, he, he, he's also another hard worker. And of course, he was a second for Magnus Carlsen. MVL, yeah, good choices. <laughs> Sven saying that. I'm going to win, <laughs> I can say. Even though I'm not playing, I'm that good. <laughs> MVL with a new hair. Oh, that's the goss. And uh, well, if you do want to follow it, all the details and uh, just catch up on the games. Then we do have English Grandmaster Gawain Jones. He's posting articles every day for Kasparov Chess. And uh, that would definitely be worth uh, a catch up because he's a great writer. He has read, wow, well, what that is, that is news. He's dyed his hair red. In. Okay, New Year's resolution, you know, he's taking it to the max. <laughs> okay, I have to check out this Instagram story. Okay, well, yeah, I, maybe he lost the bet. Maybe he fancies a change. Maybe he's been inspired by Jan Pomniashi. You know, when, when Jan was down, he changed his haircut. I've actually done that myself. It was about, about the world's blitz. Oh, okay. Well, this is good, MVL, man of his word. Okay, I'm going to be cheering for him. <laughs> no way closer to pink. That's a big job, you know, to, to go to the hairdressers and change from black into pink or to red. Then, uh, okay, that's good. And uh, Kasparov is playing Hearthstone. I don't quite know what Hearthstone... I do know what Hearthstone is, but uh, I don't quite know his like what the game is and uh yeah so definitely you should check out all the coverage on Vikings. say so catch catch up every day with gawain jones's reports and of course follow the games they're going to be super fi uh, fun and the game i'm also looking forward to first round magnus carlson against essie panko you know actually magnus is black and essie panko has the white pieces and i i don't think magnus will place a dubious Sicilian. Last year, he kind of, well, you know, he took some liberties in the opening, didn't really develop his pieces and uh, repeated the moves a few times, well, moved a few times with his pieces and, well, he got punished and it was a great victory by Esipenko. Uh, Peter also plays Hearthstone. Did Mostrash, did Badur Jobova also dye his hair because of a bet? Um, no, I don't think so. Can I resume the Tata Steel's rules, please? Um, I don't know what the Tata Steel's ru rules are, but happy new year to Fawn March Destroyer. And one, Lauren is hoping for one open Rui Lopez. Well, I think you'll get that with um, Sh 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 Mamajarov. <laughs> and L... Zero G one KK asks, "What's the sneakiest trick I've ever seen on a chessboard?" Well, it has to be during time travel where people don't put their pieces on the like or, or exactly in the middle of the squares, and then they kind of you know the pawn looks like it's moved once, and maybe it's actually moved twice to two squares, and and then they just carry on from the two squares. I don't know. It's 
always, always in time travel without the tricks happen. And uh, yeah, little bow. Thank you. And also hello to Angelo Julius. And hello to Anit Chess. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, Lauren. JW, it is also when the opponent doesn't put the knights facing the same way. There's something, the knights have to be symmetric, kind of like facing each other. You know, they have to be facing forward or they face each other or they even face backwards. And uh, is that a Swiss tournament? It is a Swiss tournament and the time control is classical. And it's going to be going on for a long time. And uh, okay. Okay, so so today, we're gonna, we are going to follow the format, which is we're going to chat, we're going to solve puzzles. We're also going to, well, we are also going to be playing some chess because I am going to be taking on all your challenges. Don't be shy. At the end, at the last hour, you know, just log on to Kasparov Chess. Challenge me. I'm the little hat. And uh, yeah, let's enjoy some games. Uh, it is definitely, I agree, classical chess is fantastic for learning. It's also great for you to kind of just kind of follow the game real time if you have uh, some time and you just try to predict what the, uh, the players are going to be, you know, playing and what moves they're going to be making and uh, test your calculation against their calculation. It, I would recommend that you don't follow with the engines because then that kind of ruins the fun out of it all. Take yourself back to the olden times when you could just watch the Grandmasters play and not have Stockfish 14 saying, it's a blunder. Yeah, see if you can spot those mistakes yourself. And uh, yeah, I thought that uh, we would warm up with something called the Triangle Mate. Now... Okay, so Bra asks, what's the best book on positional chess? I'm a big, big fan of uh, any books by Jakob Orgard. And I do like his book on positional, cha positional chess. Um, it's very much a quiz book. You have, uh, you have some puzzles to solve. And then you kind of test yourself against the answer. And one thing that I found out, especially when it comes to positional chess, is you should challenge the answer. You should ask yourself why. Why is their solution so much better? You shouldn't just uh, just go, yep, I got that wrong. And uh, it really pays off. Yep, I also agree. Sokolov has written some great books. Um, I agree with that. It's, it's good stuff. Dreyev has also written some good books. And there's a fantastic book by Gelfand, Positional Decision Making, one for everyone to read. And uh, yeah, Zoram, th thank you for joining the stream. And okay, so this is the triangle, mate. Let's take a sip of water. And uh, it's basically the queen and the rook hunting down this king and the checkmate happens in a triangle. So something like this. So the king will be, oops, I don't know what happened there. The king will be on, say, A2. The queen will be on B3. And the rook will be on B1. And there you have it, geometry. I love it when chess is like that. So now you know the name of the mate and you kind of know the pattern. And it's the queen and the rook that are the active pieces there. Then uh, it's all about exploiting the king. and. Uh, Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for your nice comments. Um, it was a lot of fun to comment on the World Championship, I have to say. Um, we, were, we were all a little bit unsure about how, you know, the format would translate to a long classical uh, game. And it was just one game. And sometimes they could be exciting games and sometimes they could be quite dry games, maybe even just boring draws. But uh, every single game turned out to be with its own little nuances and stories. And, uh, oh, thank you, Vin, for when I have to say, I do really enjoy commentating uh, almost as much as playing. I mean, I love playing and commentating is just so much fun and I have a great time. So everyone is, I've had seen a few people suggesting night taking the pawn because uh, as we know, if you want to hunt your enemy king, you, you know, you have to open lines. That is the currency. And the, when we scout the territory, we see the rook and the queen are aligned on the sea line. 
and this is the big checking square and you want to explode open the cover and at the same time you lengthen the diagonal of the bishop so to warm up knight takes pawn yep you guys got it right and good evening to Elvis. um okay so next so what are you going to do the king has been opened up so i'm presuming that you are going to continue the pursuit of this poor king by jacking yes i can see azaz and uh, the king runs as it's forced to do and uh now well, what do we do we continue continue the checks and uh <laughs> pawn march just <laughs> you want to know all the secrets i have to say i've been the luckiest person on the planet because i have done commentary with some exceptional people and um I, I love commentating with david i've loved commentating with simon yasa i've done commentary with him that was a dream come true so yeah absolutely fantastic and now we can see the rook comes down and here is our beloved little triangle because the king doesn't have too many escape squares and now the queen takes pawn Ah, uh, yeah, not not queen b2. If the queen had gone to the b2 square, well, we have a bit of a lurker on e2, and that covers that. Oops, me and my arrows. Uh, rook covers the, the b2 square, and uh, yeah. So I've so on the subject of com commentators, I've been super lucky. I've I've enjoyed every single moment with them, and commentary with Blitzstream. Yeah, then it'll be me trash talking on Blitz. So uh, nice warm up exercise, and uh, let's continue with the patterns again. Yeah, that's a uh, true Sven. The rook was doing nothing, and uh, now we have a new task, and uh, we can see scout the territory again, and we can see woohoo, white has an invader on the black side of the board, and uh, the squares that it points two are the h7 square so naturally that is going to be the target um, <laughs> but it's actually genuinely true for much destroyer i don't i don't have a favorite these guys these are awesome and i have to say I also mentioned judy polka it was just legendary to comment alongside her loved every minute uh well one thing that we should not play as a uh, someone suggested in the chat is rook h4 they correctly pointed out that that would just oh, blunder the queen because queen takes queen comes with check otherwise it would be an, a nice arabian mate yeah eric son true 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 rook h4 no you don't want to play that and uh what are the seconds so someone suggested knight takes pawn which also fits in um because after all, you start removing the defender, but then you have to work out whether the king can make a mad dash for safety and hide in the middle of the board. Um, another move that I've seen suggested by Paul March Destroyer is actually to swing the queen over to h3 and align herself with this knight, threaten checkmate. So there's some uh, good moves being suggested. Okay. What is chat saying? So chat, Sri Shiroff says knight h7, king takes h7, rook h4, also good. Yeah. Okay, that's true. But uh, what happens? We have to do some calculation after knight takes rook, knight takes pawn. Because yes, it's true, king takes knight isn't possible because of rook h4 and discovered check sorry discovered attack on the queen but the rook can actually go to the c8 square align itself with the queen and woohoo black threatens checkmate and maybe can even go king takes knight yeah so not sure knight takes pawn is quite working <laughs> rook to rook to h4 yeah don't fall for that false friend it looks like a great move you know after all Rook takes pawn is the Arabian checkmate, but queen takes queen does come with check. And unfortunately, the rules of chess, last time I checked them, is that when a king is checked, it has to move. 
Okay, so King B1 could be a nice safety move. I mean, this is a move that you would play um, if if there were no direct ways to win in this position. You just play King B1, tuck the king into the corner of the board, get ready to overprotect the C2 pawn, and also at the same time threaten Knight takes pawn or Rook H4. But chess is all about timing and uh, Pawn March Destroyer being very adamant. He, they want us to play Queen to H3. So what do we think about Queen to H3? Because this is a really forcing move. It threatens checkmate. <laughs> I love the storylines everyone's saying. Sven. <laughs> yes. Yes, maybe, maybe White can uh, forget to, you know, forget that he's just a queen down. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, queen h3, threat is checkmate, but uh, we have to work out the consequence after pawn takes knight. What happens next? Well, this rook will swing across. And one of the great things that, uh, one of the great signs in this position, I, I want to say, is that this pawn is on e5 and it cuts the board in two and it cuts the board in two because this queen is not able to transfer herself across to the king side if she were to able to do that then okay you have to be a little bit more careful and calculate deeper if you want to play queen h3 but thanks to this pawn on e5 the sign is there position is cut in half and white can therefore attack on the king side so this is a good move good move by pawn march destroyer Good job. And uh, PMD. I don't know what PMD means. Sorry. Sorry. Eric San, B4. B4 is also really quite an interesting move. Um, but Queen H3 is much more forcing. And so now after pawn takes knight, now we swing the rook across. Teamwork makes a dream work. And uh, now you guys have to be ruthless executioners and... I'll do the first move for you. And uh, hi to Aria. And uh, oh, oh yeah, PMD, Paul Marsh, sorry. Well done. <laughs> Plastics, metal, and disposable. And can you guys find the triangle? Rook H8, King and Queen to H6. There we go. We get our little mini triangle. And uh, let's warm up again. Yeah, and yeah, Hikaru right triangles. Oh, very good. Poor defense from black with F takes. Yeah. Well, the thing was, he, there was no way to rescue the king. The king was all by itself. So sometimes puzzles are like that, actually. They're quite helpful. It is what it is. Okay, so now what to do? How are you going to hunt this king? which is totally, well, it's not totally, it's almost totally open. This pawn on f7 is its only cover. So you have to start, you know, aligning these two pieces in the search for the king. Free horsey. No, no, no horsey in the board. So, okay, the first... You have to do, you do have to follow the rules of calculation, which is you calculate the checks, the captures and the attacks. So the first move would be, and I can see that Shri Shirov is saying queen to d8 and the king tucks itself away behind his own rook. But okay, so now we have some choices. So Shri Shirov is being very radical and saying we just kind of demolish the cover and just play rook takes pawn get those lines opening and uh, that's definitely one move another possibility is uh, to play it a little bit more safer and just kind of go queen to e7 but queen to e7 queen to g8 and black is groveling so time is right and uh, as Sven says you always calculate the sacking of the piece and now I'm going to be mean and now I'm going to say because this is a warm-up you gotta follow through. You can't just suggest Rick takes pawn and just go, yeah. Where is the checkmate? And 
calm first before going nuts oh yeah that's another move as well i didn't see this one rook, rook gf1 that's an even better move than queen e7 the reason why is because you're introducing a new piece in, into the attack so yeah but rook takes pawn was suggested and that is the most aggressive move it's totally explosive and if it wins it's going to win by force so rook takes pawn king takes rook okay bring a new get rook into the game and the king goes to g7 and then you've got queen f8 and so that's already a sign for you that yes it's good enough so rook f1 okay and here it comes which way are you going to capture with the wreck and here comes our little triangle there you go it's kind of i i never knew this before i did this course on checkmates i never knew that this had a name <laughs> But now I do. Did you guys know that it has a name of triangle? I'm sure not so many of you knew that. And uh, okay, here we have another one. And uh, hey to Karan. And Karsten says, no, he didn't know it either. This is triangle. This is still the triangle, mate. So we're just warming up, getting ready for the next batch of uh, what tests. They will be. They will be a little bit harder. This is just the advanced. And uh, incidentally, there's a new feature on Casper of Chess, uh, which is where you have programs where they bunch together all the lessons into a program. And at the minute, there's 17 of them and more are being released. And actually, on the subject of new lessons being released, did you guys watch the, the, the advert, the trailer? It was a, a lesson between Levon Aronian and also Alice Santaramo. And uh, the cool thing is, is that Levon Aronian is talking about how he became a grandmaster, uh, how he sat down when he was 2300 and was like, right, what do I need to do to become a grandmaster? And he's taking Alessia, the student, through all of these key moments, all these lessons that he learned and he's asking her questions. It's really, really good. So, and uh, if you if you want to try out Kasparov Chess, you know, there there is a promotion where Kasparov, uh, off, Kasparov Chess are offering one month free. So you can try it out for one month and uh, just have check out those lessons. And uh, also you can watch a few lessons on uh, YouTube. Def definitely recommend it. And oh, so, so yeah, the sorry, I just caught the Pythagorean juicer mate. Nice one, said said V. So okay, so here I can see everybody is uh, is shouting out the move. Knight to f three. Yep, rook takes knight, and uh, now we need to hunt the king using the queen and the rook. It's got to be both of those pieces. So there's two possibilities. You can go check on e2 or you can check on h4. And now since teamwork makes the dream work, which, is, which check do you calculate first? Yeah, queen to h4. Introduce the line for the rook. And now the rook can deposit herself on the second row. And here we go. Queen to h2. And now we get our beloved tri triangle mate, or as said V said, the Pythagoras juicer mate, which to be honest, is so much better than the triangle. This needs to be renamed. <laughs> and uh, yep, final triangle mate, or hang on a second, Pythagoras juicer mate. And uh, is this one. So I can, uh, looks like a little hat to my eyes. Yeah, maybe, maybe because a little hat, it was, um, I think it's Hikari Nakamura who coined this, the hat, the, this uh, Stonewall, Stonewall London system formation with the pawns on C3, D4 and E3, the hat. And then when they played the Karakan, it became the little hat. And I was like, oh. But I like Pythagoras juicer. It's very aggressive and it's very fancy as well. Yeah. Uh, the little hat mate. Yeah. 
That would be nice. We go, we should start a petition. Rename the boring triangle mate into something more adventurous. And <laughs> I'm all down for that. It should be either little hat or Pythagoras juice and mate. Or Christmas tree. Yeah, the Christmas tree mate. Yeah, it works. I like it. Okay. So last example of this mate. And once again, these rooks and queen are going to hunt down this king. And to do that, you've got to calculate those forcing moves because black can't just rest on his laurels, as we say in the UK, because if he plays the wrong move, then there might be some queen to c1. And suddenly the queen finds herself on the king side and, well, can start thinking about defense. So... Okay, so we've got to calculate rook takes pawn, explode open. And now here we have choices again. So we have queen to h5, check, queen to h3, which is better? Uh, okay, so Constantino says queen to h3 so that you're on the same diagonal as the rook. Okay, yeah, name the mate. Oh, <laughs> that's too complicated for me. I was not very good at maths. And everybody, everybody, you're in agreement. Queen to h3 is better and definitely is to keep an eye on the c8 rook. And now this is the thing that you can actually push the pawn on f8 and the king can't run. Sorry, you can push the pawn on f5 to f6 and the king can't run to f8 thanks to queen coming to c8. Very nice. So what are you guys doing? F6, oh, sorry, I did the move for you. And the king comes to G6. And now how are you gonna checkmate this king? Because if you give a check with a rook, then maybe there might be some king takes pawn. You have to calculate that one. Key. The rule, don't calculate, just do the moves that look better. Oh, okay, no, 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 we have to calculate. Uh, we do have to calculate, and uh, unfortunately, that's the way it goes in chess. And the more you practice on calculation, the better you become at it. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so we have queen g4 as a suggestion from Vedant. And uh, the thing is with this is that you do want to introduce the rook. So queen to g4 does look nice. And as long as you have the purpose of introducing this rook into the attack. Okay, I will do that. Thank you for the feedback, Pulitzer. And uh, queen to g4. Okay, that's a nice move. So the, well, this is one suggestion. Anyone else? Uh, okay, bye-bye, Sven. And uh, maybe catch you later. And uh, queen g4, queen h4 to protect f6. Remember, timing is everything because queen c1 is on the horizon. So white doesn't have the time to trap the king, so to speak. Uh, queen f5 is another suggestion. Very good. But uh, behind these two queen checks, there has to be the, the purpose to introduce this rook on f2 into the game. And it has to come and deliver a check. So... Yeah, I, which one do you prefer? Queen to g4, queen to f5. I'm going to put it out to the chat to decide. Oh no, queen f5, queen g4. Oh, it's 2 2 at the minute. Queen uh, 3 2, queen g4. Angelo says queen to g4 and g4. Okay, I can see everyone. Okay, so more people are saying g4. Rook to g2. Rook to g2, also a very interesting move, it does allow king takes pawn. And uh, then the question is, will the king run away? It might run away, like a Teletubby. Okay. Oh, I think, at the, well, the majority said g4, so I'm gonna play that move. And it's incorrect. Okay, so we'll have another go, whoops. Although I did like the concept of moving the queen to g4 and then giving a check on h4 to say, to say so to speak, and then the rook coming to g2. So okay, queen to g4, incorrect. Uh oh. 
So what next? Rook g2, introduce another piece into the attack. I mean, what happens after king takes pawn? <laughs> oh yeah, we have queen to d3 check. Oh yeah, we found, I hadn't seen that check on the diagonal. Um, yeah, queen to d3, that's a possibility. Um, but let, let's be calm. The, rook, the move that we want to play is rook to g2, because after all, two pieces are working together. And after the king goes to f6, how can we stop the king from running to e7 and making its bid for freedom? Um, you've got to control the square, and you can do that by playing queen to h4, right? Exactly. And then the king is forced to step up to f5, it's got no cover. So it's very, very ripe for something happening there. Maybe we just win a rook. <laughs> yep. If you don't have so much time on the clock, then sometimes it's a good idea to be practical. But uh, let's say we have the time. Rook. So we have to work it out. Rook to g2. The king, take, king will take the pawn on f6. Queen h4. And then the king will run to f5. Okay. So we've got to stop the king from making a bid for freedom on the e4 and f4 squares. So how can we drive the king back? So Ivansel is saying, okay, you move the rook from g2 back to f2. And uh, once we see that move, we're like, aha, it's making sense now. So yep, rook to g2 is the correct move. And then as pointed out by Angelo, I think, the queen comes to h4, the king's not allowed to run away. And now again, the king is not given any chance for making a dash to the central squares by Ivansel's move, rook f2. And now, well, we've got the pattern. Yeah, we've got the pattern. And now the rook comes to f6. And here we go. We got our little Pythagoras triangle. Yeah, it's very nice, rook f2, just to make that switch back with the rook. It's uh, quite clever and maybe not so easily visible to the eye because we're kind of thinking all the time in queen checks. So why was queen to g4 wrong? To be honest, I don't really think queen to g4 was wrong. I just think it was longer and perhaps not the most accurate uh, way to win. And uh, what can I say? Sometimes in chess, it's all about timing. It's about precision and accuracy. And... Uh, yeah, so let's move on to my next one, which actually, hang on, I'm just going to go back to the lessons and I've picked a trainer and I'm going to choose Simon Williams, uh, one of my co-commentators in, in the World Championship, actually. And I'm going to level up to, what was it? Advanced, I think it was. Yeah, advanced. And the theme was going to be bishops of opposite color. Yeah, ginger, ginger GM. And uh, the reason I wanted bishops of opposite color, let's uh, have a taster of the position in store, is because the person who has the initiative will often have a, a decisive advantage because, well, Say in black's case, black has complete dominance over the dark squares and uh, there's nothing white can do about it. There's no bishop to challenge it. And this light square bishop is just helpless. So guard your weaknesses like crazy if you find yourself in a middle game with opposite color bishops and definitely don't make any pawn weaknesses, you know, because pawn weaknesses are permanent. Can't get rid of them. Barry the B pawn. Yeah, we call her Beth. Uh, in uh, I have this rule that half the board is female, half the board is male, and we have fairness. <laughs> and so Harry is like Gary, Freddie, I don't know what E is, we haven't, we haven't reached that far. And then there's like D, I think it might be Diana, Alice is for A, Barry, uh, no, not Barry, um, although it could be Barry, um, B is Beth, and C, maybe Charlie, I don't know. Well, they do they keep their name? No, 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 they they change name. They're they're very fickle, you know. If the, 
the pawn, if a G pawn takes on H5, it becomes Harry. Harry number two. Yeah. E is for Elaine. Yeah, E is an, a male name because half this half is a uh, male. This half is female. I like, uh, I like the way it works. Okay. So here, black has you know black has the initiative. That's for sure. And the reason I can I say that with quite confident with a lot of confidence is to do with the fact that this bishop on g7 has a lot more potential. I mean, for starters, it can plop itself on d4 and start eyeing up this diagonal. But black has to be super quick because, well, let's face it, c7 is coming and uh, white also has some trumps of their own because maybe this pawn can get to c8. So it's all about the power of the bishop. How is black going to break through? So bishop d4 has been suggested by Sri Shiroff. <laughs> I see no Arya says I see no move um yeah well bishop d4 is the main contender because it activates the bishop and uh what we want to do is we want to find the breakthrough point and uh again I always suggest I always say when you have a position like this scout the territory go back to basics and uh, one thing we see for instance the queen is on h6 it would love to deposit itself on h3, but unfortunately that's a light squared and adequately protected by the bishop on f1. But we do have pawns on f2 and g3, and these are on dark squares, therefore weaknesses. And uh, also we have this amazing beast of a pawn on f3, and this another wonderful pawn on d2 one square away from queening and uh bishop d4 certainly the most natural move but what's the follow-through and uh shri Shorov says well you know it's all about those sacrifices they want to drag the king out into the open by playing bishop takes f2 what would be the follow-through so if you got two moves for free so you got bishop d4 and then bishop takes pawn what is black oops black next going to play once the king was on f2, yeah. Okay, so queen to h2. And that's it. Queen to h2. And uh, so, okay, so how are we going to follow through? Let's play it. This is definitely the most aggressive move. And c7 on the board. And uh, But the question is, if the white king runs to e3, what happens next? Yeah, so bishop takes f2, good. But after queen to h2 and the king run into e3, yeah, there's one more check, and this is the killer blow. The queen can go to g1, and there's just no escape. Nothing. It's checkmate, I think. I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, nice, nice exercise. Yeah. And so now we have another situation with opposite color bishops and again, scout the territory. So count material, it's always a good move. And one thing that should draw your eye immediately is that this bishop controls a one, which is the queening square for Annie, a pawn on the A file. And then it's like unstoppable. If that pawn had free passage all the way down to there, nothing would prevent it from becoming a queen. <laughs> that checkmate, no, no, no name, unfortunately, for that checkmate. So can't believe, yeah, at Eric's son. Sometimes the puzzles, the, you know, the defender doesn't defend in the best way. But there is actually really difficult for any piece to get back because of this strong pawn on that strong pawn on f3 and also the pawn on d2. And uh, thank you, crosswise. And here, scout, remember to scout the territory. So this bishop controls the queening square to a1. And if this pawn were to get free passage, it would definitely become a queen. Primarily because this bishop on d7 is not doing anything can't get back to that blockade so you have to ask yourself how how can black generate 
a past pawn on the ally. Uh, big hi to as cool as cool as beans. <laughs> Took me a while to get to, to figure out exactly what the handle meant. Hungarian pawn break is what it's called. Eric Eric San says it's pretty. Yeah, um, I don't know about the Hungarian pawn break. I've never heard of it before, but uh, you need it. You need it. This is the pawn that's going to, or a pawn on the A line is going to win the game for you. But okay, if you play pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn, no biggie, says White. So Ivancel is suggesting the move queen to d6, trading off queens. Is that the answer to this puzzle? I'm thinking of bishop c3, but it looks too passive, says pawn march destroyer. Well, it is definitely a move, but remember the goal. Uh, so as cool as beans is saying queen to c8. If you play queen to c8, I like the idea behind it, you know, swapping off queens, swapping off a defender of a3. But the problem is, is that this bishop on d7 can take the queen. So not quite there. But do I do like the reasoning? No, the idea is under a queen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, well, that was a bit sophisticated. Um, maybe a game of got to take. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I like it. Christmas gifts. Yeah, I agree belated ones admittedly okay so we have a suggestion from Ivancel which is basically to play queen to d6 make the trade what does the crowd think do we want to swap of queens would it be beneficial is uh, the white queen better than the black queen uh, does it fit in with black's purpose of driving home an a pawn to the queen's queenie square it is, it is a tough position, but you do have to remember that opposite color bishops, the person who has the initiative, the person who is able to create the pass pawn, to hunt down the king. And uh, when it comes to pass pawns, it's all about the color of the queening square. If this queening square were white, okay, so or, or rather, you know, this bishop were a light square bishop, then driving home this a pawn wouldn't be as powerful. What about going bishop c3? Bishop c3 is good, but does it fit in with the objective? So the objective is to just magically get this a3 pawn off the board so that uh, the a pawn on a4 can just move forward and a2. So white is not threatening queen takes before, so we have a free move. Yeah, so if you play bishop to c3. The thing is, there are two people playing chess, uh, as uh, often is the problem, and uh, white will play pawn takes pawn, so eliminating the dangerous a pawn, and now the threat is to play pawn takes pawn. Uh, sorry, let me be clear. So when the bishop comes here, b takes a4, and uh, once the b3 pawn has disappeared to the a4 square, then it will be a takes b4 in the air yeah yeah so the black queen so who is the key defender in all of this um you have to go back to Ivancel's suggestion so bishop e5 bishop d6 i like it but it is a little bit it is slightly on the slow side and the reason why it's slightly on the slow side is because after bishop to e5 Pawn takes pawn, uh, sorry, b takes a4, I'll be precise with my coordinates. Well it, well, it opens up the rook on b1 to attack the queen on b8, which means that b takes a3 isn't actually possible at the end of day because of this pin against the queen. So this is why we have to be very, very careful. Chess is all about timing. <laughs> <laughs> like a school teacher maybe that should have been my calling to be a school teacher yes yeah, so elvis elvis kind of getting on board with Evansel's idea saying trade off the queens 
And uh, when we think about it, it is a great move. Uh, let's go back because white has to defend this bishop on d7, otherwise it's just a bishop down. And after queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, that's forced. And now we can see, well, mission has been achieved because now the pawn can come to a3. The bishop can guide it through to the a1 queening square. Off, off for a draw, says San Carlo. No, no, no. Carallo, sorry. Uh, so pawn on and uh, we've got it. It's a nice example. Very nice example. And you only really get the answer just by kind of, this is the aim of the game. This is what I want to do. And uh, thinking about that and thinking about what your opponent's best pieces are. So I like that example. Let's go to puzzle three. And here we have a bit more concrete one because we see that there is one goal. This queen wants to get on the f3 square and uh, threaten checkmate on g2. Just takes, takes and mates, yeah. So, okay, how about h5? So h5 is a nifty idea to uh, open the king side by offering a trade of pawns and uh, just using this hook on g4. That's one idea. What else do we have? Remember, if this queen finds itself on f3, it's going to be pretty deadly, right? It's going to come and deliver checkmate on g2 and nothing is going to stop checkmate there. Queen f6 takes and bakes. Oh my god, I have to use that. So queen f6, h5, queen f6, which one? Queen d3. Queen d3, yep. Um, one immediate thing that springs to mind with queen d3 is that you want to get to the f3 square like this. And uh, this does allow the white queen to come to e3 and maybe just hold the position together for a little bit longer. It might not even be possible to do it, but uh, white is surviving for a few more moves. So queen to c2. If you go to queen to c2, you're, you're attacking the f2 pawn like this. But again, the queen can dash back and defend the e2 pawn. So the move to make is uh, as cool as being in <laughs> show mercy. No, not quite. Uh, in chess, you show, you never show mercy. I mean, one of my favorite quotes about chess is that uh, chess is a street fight. When your opponent is down, you kick him. And uh, okay, so the queen came to e3. And now the, the point is, is that there is a way to distract this queen from the, her coverage of the f3 square by playing rook trades. Correct, as, as cool as beans. Yes, uh, and hello. Uh, the queen comes down to... F oh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't come down to f3. Okay, something else. You're going to be a bit more accurate than me. So the problem, the reason why queen f3 was not accurate is because now the queen can come to g1 and the queen protects her king. So, yeah, <laughs> queen f4. Correct. Uh, okay, queen to f. Why am I not being allowed to make? Queen takes there. Um, something's happened. I can't make the queen move. But the queen is going to come to f4. And then when the king goes to g1, now you come down to f3. Little neat move. Uh, oh, yeah, try again. Yes, 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 try again. There you go. Great move. Queen to f3. <clears throat> Whoops. Uh, yeah, queen. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so next exercise. Okay, so let's... Uh, good job. Good job, everyone. Okay, so now we have a new, a new one. And uh, here we can see that this, uh, this rook, they're not very great. The king is not good. 
and it can only step forward into dark squares. White has a light square, a dark square bishop that is. Hello, Lorraine. How are you doing? One drink too many, I think. Yeah, too much hot water. And uh, okay, so Ginger GM style. <laughs> That was my favourite moment during the World Champs when, uh, you know, we were commentating on that very long game, game six. And <laughs> Simon thinks that champagne that's been brought in to celebrate the longest game ever played in World Championship history is champagne. And it's not champagne. And his face was like, oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Lorraine. So we have Rick takes, Rick takes A7. That's neat. Moved by Elvis, and uh, what's the idea? Aha, uh -huh. okay, love it. Okay, so Elvis 1277 is suggesting Rip takes pawn, and he has a sneaky idea behind this long live the king. And so the whole idea is after Rick takes Rook, Rook will come down to b8 and give check, and uh, well. After king to e7, you want to, now that the rook has been decoyed to the a line, this bishop can take the pawn on c5. It's a nice, nice idea, but it's incorrect. It's incorrect. And the reason why it's incorrect is because you have to, if he plays rook takes a7 first, then the black rook will come to c8. That is why it's incorrect, but I like the idea. Whoops. So what can we do? Yeah, we can, well, basically inverse the move order, play rook to b8 first, and now, no, incorrect. Oh, okay. I actually thought that that was the idea. Rook takes a7, but now I can see that it's simply rook to c6, and, uh, that's that. So how is uh, black, well, how is white going to keep the game going? You know, bishop takes pawn. It looks very, very good. Bishop takes the seat four first. Oh, a random oven. Hello. Hello. Very good. It has been, it's been, well, since last December. And uh, bishop, someone's suggesting bishop takes pawn first. And uh, well, what's the answer after rook takes bishop? And then rook e6, e6, rook e8. Aha. Uh -huh. Except after rook takes e, after rook comes to e6, you need to make sure that the king takes and not a pawn captures. So okay, rook e6. How can we? How can we play rook a5 maybe? Maybe it's just as simple as that. It's uh, it's good. And then the whole idea is to play rook takes pawn or bishop takes pawn. Bank it, as we say. Rook c6. Rook c6 unfortunately allows rook takes c6. And also pawn takes c6. Uh, gives the king an opening on d7. Um, I do think that... Let's try rook a5. Shall we try rook a5? That's the move I'm I'm itching for. Although I really like rook takes pawn on a7. I thought, aha, rook takes a pawn on a7 maybe doesn't quite work because of when the bishop comes to capture the pawn, there is d6. So I think maybe, nope. Rook a is... The <laughs> okay, so rook a5, which would be the ruthless move, is not the solution. Okay. Well, there you go. You have us stumped. I thought that this had to be it. This is the weak point on c5. Yeah. Bishop takes, so, so um, Shri Shirov is suggesting bishop takes pawn with the idea that the rook will come to a7 and then a8 and then, well, just harass the king. Yep, yeah. but it might not be checkmate though. 
So what is the sneaky idea that white has up his sleeve? Other forcing moves. Let's uh let's work it out. We also have e6. Lengthen the scope of this dark squared bishop. That's one move. Um, another move could be I don't know why rook a5 is something I would play. Bishop d2 with the idea of bishop a5. Yep. Also good. I, I like I like bishop d2. We did try bishop. No, we haven't tried bishop takes c5. I wasn't quite 100% convinced about the idea of playing bishop takes pawn because after rook a7, I do feel that black has got enough defensive resources. Um, especially in light of d6. But, uh, okay, what do we think? Try it. Okay, well, two votes for bishop takes pawn. Okay. Ivansel says, no way. Rook f6, uh, Eric San says, rook f6 to force Sugzwang. That looks like a great move to me. Bishop d2 also looks like a great move. I love this idea of doing a little switch back with the bishop, attacking on a different flank. And, and uh, Vin for win asks a very interesting question, which I'll come back to. So, okay, so shall we take the pawn? I don't think it, I don't think it works, but shall I do it? Incorrect. There you go. Just to put my mind at ease. So that's not the move. And uh, well, I actually, I think the players are very professional and very fit uh, in response to your questions about whether the Champions Chess Tour schedule is just too hectic. And uh, most of the time they pick and choose the tournaments they want to play in. And I was we were talking to Magnus and Anish Giri when they um, appeared on the tour finals. And they said they really liked the tour schedule because it allowed them to use these tournaments as training. Bishop to f4. Yeah. As cool as beans, you got it right. And uh, the whole idea was to go e6. e6. And uh, okay, well, now the rook. Now we can take the pawn or we can go pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn or pawn takes pawn. You choose. Rook is trapped. Which one do you want to play? Or you can play rook takes c6. And if Ansel is saying pawn takes d7, pawn takes f7 is also a possibility, but I think pawn takes d7 looks nice. And now we get our beloved. Neat. Sometimes, okay, let's go back to the key move that we... We were so tempted by this pawn on c5 that we forgot that there's a much more basic plan which is to activate the bishop on by putting on f4 and then releasing its potential by playing e6 because if we're object objective about this whole position we can actually we can actually see that black doesn't have too many things to do so yeah and uh i just check in the chat and i can see such sweet thunder saying one week away from chess in warm gibraltar I hope the schedule is still unchanged, yeah. And, uh, okay, so that was quite a, what was harder puzzle than it appeared, I must admit. I, I thought that the answer was to do with just take the pawn, the end, on c5. And this is a neat one because the king is trapped on h5. It's got no squares. It's in a real mating net. So... How does one actually, well, give it checkmate? One must always admit. Uh, Lorraine, the Champions Chess Tour starts in at the end of February. So around about the, I think it's the 20, 22nd, 23rd. A neat one. Ah, very good, a neat. Uh, so we have a suggestion, rook to h3, but if you move the rook away from the g-line, well, the white king can and it should escape. So the king will go to g4 and go, I'm free, and then run away. Uh, <laughs> okay, so 
not a rook h3 it does go for a pawn and does win a pawn in h4 but the price is the king is let out of his cage so another suggestion is rook to g6 where are you going with the rook where's the checkmate so so if you go g6 check then the white king is allowed out of its little cage and can come step forward to h6 and it will be very sneaky because it will run to h7 g8 and f7 and instead of being a trapped king that king is a weapon of mass destruction so we don't want that move g6 although it looks very tempting you will only want to play g6 if the h6 square is controlled so okay so Ivansor is saying bishop e7 very sneaky move bishop e7 so we have some very two cunning ideas behind this move so Ericsson is saying that bishop e7 retreat the bishop and play a five to cover the g4 square Ivansor has an even craftier idea in mind he wants to retreat or they want to retreat the bishop to f8 and then go g6 and then that will be checkmate what do you guys think about that and uh, sin Carallo says h6 um h6 unfortunately it does look good but it doesn't deal with the point of uh catching and checkmating this king it's trapped we need a check we need to control it flight squares and uh reinhard is saying go for bishop b7 i i do think so bishop b7 great retreating move and now after f5 what should we do does it change the the equilibrium can we still go for the same plan we do threaten mate with bishop e7 yeah and no king is g8 yeah so if you go g6 now we have the same problem the white king will run to h6 to h7 to g8 and f7 um just be a pain Bishop f8. <laughs> Bishop f8 and uh, g6. Unstoppable checkmate. Uh, so very, very cool set of puzzles from Simon Williams there. And uh, the other lesson I had prepared, I have to say, was actually from Roman Edouard. And that was what to do under pressure. But, uh, but I think it is now time for people to challenge me and uh, take me on so if you want to challenge me to a game you have to go on to Kasparov Chess and uh, you have to create an account if you have an account that's fine and you just have to challenge me I'm the little hat and I will take on all time controls Ex well let me condition that one actually i will take on three minutes three minutes plus two minutes i can be black white i'm gonna even play fish or random chess it does not matter what uh, matters is that it, please don't challenge me a bullet chess or anything longer than five minutes because then it becomes just too long and uh now i'm playing into my beloved karakan you're always going to get a karakan from me and uh then we are just going to play this and one of your big chances is to flag me because i will be talking and i'm also going to be a little bit distracted so i might make some blunders here and there and one of the things to note is that this knight is on f3 so it gets in the way of a potential pawn storm so now i'm going to put my knight on to d7 and i'm going to okay so you want to trade off bishops i'm not going to let you trade off bishops and if you castle okay well here it comes it's a war you don't need to ask me twice i want to wrestle no <laughs> no not at all okay i'm going to move my knight to f8 knight is the king's best friend as taught to me by david um now i'm never going to allow a knight to come to g5 so my pawn is going to come to f5 and i'm also threatening to play f4 trap the bishop and look at my knight it's covering all the nice squares 
and I still have ideas of going. Okay, very good, very good. Let's go this. Let's go one step forward. Pin and win. One thing that I've discovered from this, uh, from commentary and also from doing streaming, is that I am such a materialist. I, I love grabbing material, sometimes at extreme danger to my king. And now, let's do it. No, you don't. So sometimes I get myself into big, big trouble. And uh, hello to Thunder FR. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining the stream. And now this queen wants to come to h5. I told you, sometimes I get into trouble because I'm too greedy. Um, that rook wasn't doing anything. But I'm going to control this knight. I want to control this circuit. So it doesn't want to come forward to f5. And uh, what am I going to do? I have rooks, and rooks like open lines. So I'm going to try to initiate an opening of the C line. And plus, I like pawn storms. <laughs> and it turns out he might be you might be doing a pawn storm on me oh well it is what it is let's just open lines and then let's come with my bishop to see oh i should put my bishop on e5 bishop on e5 is so much better than bishop to c5 look how it gets in the way of my queen okay no unpleasantness. Okay, so let, okay, so one minute, one minute, speed up. Okay. Da, da. No, fifty-one seconds. Okay, we got to speed up. I I realize that this pawn is up for grabs. I'm giving it up just so that I can activate my rooks. And here it comes. We've got pressure against the bishop. 45 seconds. Um, okay, let's introduce my knight into the game. <sighs> Do -do -do -do. Okay, let's take this. Centralize my queen. 34 seconds. I can do this. I don't have time added. My opponent has 38 seconds and now we're going to come up, put pressure on this. And I'm still on eyeing up this pawn on A2. And I also have rook takes pawn. It's good. It's good. If, okay, a little happy accident there. I didn't see knight c2, but I was saved by queen. Attacking the brook on h2, and now it's good to go. And I have more time on the clock, so all good. Don't say, yeah. <laughs> be calm, be calm. Okay, so now, now let's take that one. It's more dangerous. Oh no, I could have taken knight takes bishop. Um, okay, let's put that there. Okay, so good game and now i'm going to accept bits the bits oh hang on bits the bits and okay here we go i have the white pieces what am i going to play let's play d4 thank you elvis that's a very nice comment um what should i play i play my f3 the london says okay i'll let you guys choose okay let's go for it london step it back keep the tension and uh, oh you want to trap my bishop we can't go for that no can do play it no no i will never play the bond cloud cloud uh, i will never ever play the bond cloud unless by accident there you go you heard it here first <laughs> no king dt d king d2 okay so let's uh challenge this 
spawn center. And let's go. This is like my favorite pawn structure in the world. I call it the big clamp. And I'm going to go B4, A4. I'm just going to go Queen C2 first. Maybe that wasn't such a good move. B4. I'm just going to go B5. Okay. This is my target. Where do I want my bishop? I don't know where I want my bishop. Let's put it there. Why didn't I take the pawn? I don't know why I didn't take the pawn. And uh, I don't know that opening. Okay, I'll play I'll play the cowboy opening. I'll, uh, I promise you, the next white game I have, it will be a cowboy. Okay, so now I'll take it. It took me a while to see that one, but I've seen it. And greed is good. Okay. Let's capture. Let's, sorry, not capture. Let's just castle. And then I'm going to try to dominate the sea line. I don't know what the toilet variation is. What is toilet variation? You guys will have to help me out. What is it? No, greed is never good, except when it comes to chess. But then it can be good. Okay, so swap of queens. Um, the positional player in me wants to swap of queens. The hacker in me says no. I don't want to. I want to. I want to put a rook on the seventh rank and then move a knight to e five, and I just want to. Just want to win, basically. And okay, so let's put my rook on the c line. Yes, this was my idea. Decoy the queen, and now I can come to capture the rook. Ah, okay, Sven, enlightening me onto into the what is toilet variation. Yes, yes, yes. It's a very effective, <laughs> a hundred percent success rate. That one, the toilet variation. Go to. Yeah, I don't I don't know why people do that. There's no what is the point of cheating? There's, no, there's just no pleasure in it whatsoever. Um da -da -da -da. let's improve my knight. And I want to activate my yeah, that's fine. Oh whoops. Um Da, da, da. Let's just control the C line. No, we have a knight. Backward knight moves are so difficult to spot. And now it's just get, get as greedy as possible. Okay, now I can take. And uh, am I teaching chess? Um, not at the minute, no. At the minute, I'm just. Uh, Commentating and playing. So it's quite an exciting life. And streaming, of course. And now we have the lawnmower mate. All the horse. Do it. Yes, we did like this. Okay, Sven. Okay, hang on. Sven, first come, first served. And. Uh, I have lost to Sven a few times. He's uh, very good. And we, somehow I always play black. Is that deliberate? This time I'm going to play the Scandinavian. After saying I would only play the Karakhan, it's a Scandinavian for me. And it's going to be this Queen A5. I've been inspired by Richard Rapport. And then the bishop comes to G4. And if things go my way, I will get a really good. I will get a really good caracar. If things don't go my way, let's get the queen out of the way. Then I will just have lost lots and lots of time with the queen, and I will be under attack. Okay, so let's go here. 
Okay, fine. I'll capture. Okay, let's cover this G5 square. Okay. Now, I'm going to play it very positionally. I'm going to try to say that black has the better position because the person who controls the potential opening of this D line is black. I have these pawn moves, E5, and more likely C5. And once I get those, then, okay, so now I need to think. And another way to undermine it, which I might just demonstrate it, is to go B5. And uh, he, if they go C5, then, uh, then you get the D5 square for free, which is great news. If they go C takes B5, then they kind of ruin their own pawn structure. And now, now I'm trying, going to see if I can cause some trouble. Let's go pawn takes pawn. And let's put my queen here. And I'm going to say these two are weaknesses. And I've got one. Two weaknesses. Worse than one. Oh, oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to play c5 again. Uh, yeah, I don't like b5. It looks weird to me. Yeah, I just I just played it because I wanted to demonstrate this whole unusual. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, "What on earth is that?" But it's actually quite an effective device. Device I've I've used it many many times. Now I'm going to switch my queen over to this h5 side, and uh, it is a, it is a bit weird and probably wasn't good. I admit to that. But I did it anyhow. And how am I going to get my knight into the game? I really want my knight into the game. Okay. Okay, well, one minute. Sven is very quick. He's much faster than me. So I have to beat him on the board. And uh, Nippo played c5. I, uh, yeah, I, if I hadn't been flashy, I would probably have just played c5. But I wanted to show a thematic idea that you have to, that, that you should be aware of. Uh, why am I giving away my pieces? I don't know because I'm not concentrating. Okay, now we take. He could have taken the pawn on c6. Okay. Da, da, da. You win a pawn, I win a pawn. We're happy. Jump forward. Thread ninety two check. You didn't see it. I take it. Checkmate, the old back cranker. What am I doing? Okay, I'm panicking here. This is not good technique. Um, let's drop my knight back. Oh no, <laughs> what am I doing? Oh my goodness me, um, blah. oh no, I'm gonna lose this from being a piece up. Oh, for goodness sake, for goodness sake, Yvanka. That was a turn up for the books. How the how on earth did that happen? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, hang on, bon cloud. I don't know. That wasn't a proud, good moment for me. I can't believe I forgot about king takes knight. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Please don't do it. It's not racing kings, and even then, it's too risky a strategy. Okay. Jacks. Okay. This is a win the queen. No. Don't do don't play the bong cloud against me. I don't like it. I don't like it. So so if you want to challenge me, you just create an account on Kasparov Chess and you challenge me, the little hat. And I okay, this is a nice time control, five minutes. And uh, I always always accept one cloud only without thinking, and then it's like, oh, it's the bonk. <laughs> You guys are trolling me bad. Pong Cloud, I don't like it. Don't play it. That's why. Why? You have the white pieces. It is not just. I'm going to take your pawn. Yeah, just make them Yovi. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's mean. Bon cloud. Okay, so I don't know. I want to keep my bishop there. Thank you very much. Put my knight here. Your knight. I'm not going to come to that. I'm going to put my bishop on the best diagonal there is. And then. Just develop my knight. Should I ban chat? No, 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 no. Chat's awesome. But uh, how can I say? How can I say no bomb clouds? Yeah. I'm being very aggressive. Knight takes bishop is my idea. And if bishop takes knight. Okay, I want to add more pressure onto. So I want to go and I just want his bishop back, basically. I want what is mine. And this is the light square bishop or the dark square bishop. They belong to me. Okay, no, you're not having my light square bishop. Bishops are just too good. I have a big preference for them. So now I'm going to kick back your knight, if you let me, if I can. There were consequences to moving the rook from the A-line, and uh, that was one of them. After pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight. In fact, that's a good rule for intuition. Um, you should take a look at the last move that your opponent played and just kind of assess what the consequences were. You know, they played the rook to b1. They didn't. Don't defend on a3. Uh, oh, Ravel, that's very nice. Thank you. Uh, it's very nice of you to say that. Uh, I really, really do appreciate all your support and all your kind words when it comes to commentary, when it comes to streaming. I mean, it, it wouldn't be half as fun without your interaction and without people kind of giving me their feedback. And I just, I think it's such a beautiful community that we have kind of established in this last few years. I've just been very inspired by everyone's journeys in chess. You know, everyone's kind of like having fun. There's a really nice network of people. I mean, you just can't ask for, ask for more really. 
I'm just going to grab another pawn because, because I'm greedy. I've said it one too many times, but it's true. And, uh, okay, so now you want to take my bishop. I give it to you. But I'm just going to... I'm going to grab you another pawn. And then centralize our knight. And the time control is good. So, okay, I'm going to centralize that knight, the octo knight, as uh, Malcolm Payne coins it. And now these pawns are just going to roll them down. Fine, let's go. No, knights need posts. We need to support them. And uh, yeah, I had a nice try, but I can take it. Definitely, you know, COVID really changed the, the, the whole scene, you know, with, with like changing the online tournaments. Suddenly they became much bigger, better. And then, of course, we have the Queen's Gambit. Oh, hang on a second. I promised a cowboy. Here it is, b3. Now, I have looked at a little of this. And I can say, I'm not sure I remember it. But we kind of kind of do some kind of reverse Sicilian. And... We go like this, and the big, we want d4. It's my favorite move. Is Yeah, there is. Yeah, I, I am checking on both YouTube chat and uh, and on Twitch, actually. So my Fido rating is uh, <laughs> it's really low. I think it's the lowest it's been for a long, long time. But that doesn't bother me. It really doesn't bother me. I'm going to give me the pawn chain. Um, it's around about 2360, I would say, at the minute. And it's, it's so, I mean, I had a bit of a, a bit of a tough time at the Regan, not in terms of, well, in terms of the results, you know, they just didn't work my way. And uh, I was a little bit rusty. There's uh, no excuses there. It's just the way the cards fell. Things just didn't work out. I had some really, really promising positions and it cost me rating points. But it doesn't matter because I do feel like I'm learning and I'm just improving my overall general chess knowledge. And that's the most important thing. Now, according to the rules of David, one should always control these knights and I'm going to do it with my pawns. Yeah. Okay, this one as well. There you go. Controlled. What am I going to do with my king? I haven't decided. Yeah, I, I totally sympathize with you. For a long time, it is quite stressful. But then um, I, I got some great words of advice from someone who just said, you know, don't worry about the outcomes. Just focus on the whole process. And if you focus on just improving and learning, you are going to get better. Absolutely. And uh, then you can just relax and just play chess. Okay, this is my idea behind that. And did I have anything other than? Um, my brain is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Other hand said, just take the pawn. You have some pieces. They can't take on a2 just yet, Omkar. And uh, maybe the action will not happen on the wings, but in the center. Uh, do I, yeah, I do play on Kasparov chess. I, I check it out. I check out the lessons quite a bit. Um, I've been watching a lot of Levon Aronians. I also follow Gary Kasparov's. I've been watching his masterclasses. Um, and when I get the chance, I do play. And uh, I also stream for Kasparov chess. So why do we always do things that the brain says no to, asks uh, Angelo. I don't know. I don't know. That is the million dollar question. Why do we do these things to ourselves? Because we just can't help it. 
it's too beautiful. Um, okay, so now I want to, I want to, what do I want to do? I want to defend on F2. Because it's kind of necessary. But I kind of, oh. I don't want to trade, trade off queens, but my queen is unstable. Mm. Okay, let's do it. And uh, we'll just top queens off and uh, just try to win with my extra a pawn. Okay, now this bishop is offside. And he wants to play bishop f5. Um, if I go g4, then knight comes into f4. So that's that's the kind of consequence about that. So I don't really... If I play knight e4... Okay, let's just centralize. It's not the end of the world if he gets this uh, f5. b1 diagonal. Wow, that is impressive, Aria. That's a big jump, 900 to 1400. It's very, very big, and uh, it means that you're a very strong player. Um, Kosten, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely playing more, and uh, they also have a playing lobby, so you can just wait until someone is available. I really do like the layout. I like the colors, and I'll, okay. Now, I, I, I trap this bishop. And now, okay. Nothing, no danger. No, this should be no danger, and this bishop is offside. So now all I need to do is take the game into an endgame, and then this bishop will be a problem. And, uh, okay. There's no bishop to b5, g5, that's good. And then I'm going to take the utmost of care and put my king on b1. Yep, Every, anybody can challenge me. It's, uh, I will take on everyone. Okay, so now I'm going to finally tuck my king away and protect the a2 square. And then I will come into d5. And if black wants to attack my queen by moving the bishop, I'm just simply gonna go queen takes rook because then basically what we're doing is just trading off pieces. <laughs> I ran to... <laughs> did, he... did he really? Did he talk about that? That's, uh, that's so funny. That's such a funny thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play my bishop to c4, just because I have ideas of maybe playing bishop takes f7. Um, Let's, okay, let's take. <laughs> I think they're just, I think they're just, uh, I, I don't know, I like the pieces. I think that they're very nice, very, oh, hang on, do not play bad moves like that, you'll be without concentrating. Okay, so you want the end game experience. This knight is doing an excellent job. Compliments to this piece, just holding tight the queen side and now I've got my eyes on you h3 bishop yeah uh where is the hat yeah there is no hat um that was just the name I came up with many many years ago oh okay 
Okay, okay. Is it a biggie? No. It's not a biggie. And now I want to take here. Hmm. Concentrate your view. Okay, so da 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 da. I can't believe I played that. Oh God, sometimes I'm lost for words at my own forgetfulness. Okay, let's take that one. Oh, that was just that was just crazy. I'm not very good. Okay, please go easy on me. Next game. Um, <laughs> the little hat gets mated by big hat. Yes, yeah, someone should come up with the name the big hat. Uh, oh, hang on a second. One minute. It's lie. What is this? Get back. Okay, I'm up on time. King is in problems. Um, let's go back. Uh, gosh. I was surprising to get one minute challenge. Uh, no one minute challenges. They're too quick and it's very difficult to, very difficult to kind of like chat, check, check the comments and uh, keep a tab on the position as well. So there goes there. Um, there's my queen. 27 seconds. There. Check. And then I'm pre-move that. Okay. Okay, so no, no one minute. Uh poor much destroyer no one minute challenges please um five minutes three minutes three plus two we can play fisher random um we can play peace odds whatever that doesn't matter but one minute chess don't do and we don't i don't do 10 minute either so oh thank you elvis okay so we have f3 okay so let's do it I'll take you on in the fantasy variation. Okay, so move is bishop g4. That's what I recommended in my book. And now I have to be super careful because bishop takes pawn check looks really, really good, but I will just play king takes pawn, bishop. And uh, when the knight comes to g5, queen takes g5. And uh, once again, I have to be super careful and I'm gonna put my bishop onto the d6 square. And now the move is queen e7. And this is gonna be interesting because I'm gonna give up material. And I'm just gonna to say to white, what you doing with the king? So I'm not gonna do anything fancy from now on. All I'm gonna do is just Keep asking the question to this king, where are you going to go? And 
then I'm going to develop my pieces. So, oh yeah. So, do you, I love that Ali Reza is playing lots of caros. I mean, it's just great. You know, I was looking at one of his games just recently where he beat, well, he drew against Wesley So, but it was quite an impressive version of the advanced variation that he played. And uh, I love that. Uh, I also I also love that um, a lot of the top, top grandmasters occasionally use the caro, so you can you can really steal from their ideas. So somehow I'm going to castle. And not so much time. Maybe I should have played something a bit more accurate, actually. Yeah, I was a bit, I was a bit lenient there. I should have played something else. Okay, so. I actually had the possibility to play um, Pawn Takes Pawn, but I didn't play it. Oh, well, it is what it is. You can't beat yourself up about mistakes that you made. The past is the past. Um, what is my chess.com? Um, it's uh, just my name. It's just my name. I don't play on it very often though. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, where's he going with his king? He did answer the question. He went to the king side and I'm just annoyed with myself that I did not play. I did not play pawn takes pawn and follow that up with knight takes pawn. That would have been so cool. But I didn't do it. So now I'm going to just try to put pressure on the dark squares. Okay, now it's opposite color bishops. And uh, here we go. I'm going to go for the dark, dark squares. He's going to go for the light squares. Who will be successful? Well, we'll find out. Da, 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 da. Who benefits from that capture? He does. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to clamp down. I just want to put my pawn on d3. Put my knight on e5. Okay, I'll put my knight on c5. I have my eyes on this bishop. I got very excited. I thought there might be a lot of fireworks. But I think it might be just the positional grind. He has 33 seconds and he's threatening checkmate. I saw that. I saw that one. And uh, still king problems. Forward of my king, it's always okay. Let's destabilize this bishop. Oh, oh, get out of the way there. That was a mean. There was some crafty maneuvering happening there that I didn't really. Okay, let's push my pawn into D. I didn't really anticipate how good it was. But he's got no time, and uh, that's the main thing. You can win on time, you can win on the, over the board. There's glory in every single victory. Okay, I'll play Arfel and. Uh, Oh, thank you, as cool as beans. Um, sometimes I make mistakes. I'm uh, at, at the minute. I'm a little bit erratic. Sometimes I have a very good tournament. Tournament. Sometimes I have a really bad tournament, and I lose the rating. Okay, let's play. Let's uh, play critical stuff. I'm too slow, though. Yeah, it was a good game. It was an interesting battle. Definitely, I can like it here. A3. Uh, 
and the idea is to go b4 and then bishop b2. Okay, so now, well, at least the b4 square is controlled. I do have to brush up on my Elbin counter gambit theory. Um, yeah, it's been a long time since I looked at it, or studied it, but I'm going to have that pawn. You don't need to ask me twice. And now I'm going to play d5 if I'm allowed. So you got to watch out, awful. d5 is coming your way. Really have to be a bit careful. Deal with that threat. Um, any recommend? Yeah, so Paul, I would recommend that you start off with a, a it depends on what kind of style you want, but I definitely do recommend um, the courses that you get on Chesterwall, to be honest with you. Uh, Sam Shanklin does a very comprehensive one, but it's kind of quite critical. And if you're looking for something very simple, that's kind of more to do with formulas and uh, playing in the same kind of way, then I definitely recommend uh, Keep It Simple. It's a, it's a good, it's a great book. And uh, it is pretty much simple. Um, is there any theory? Yeah, there's there's always theory on every single opening. Um, but the thing is, that, you know, if you choose uh, an opening where the moves are a little bit instinctive to you, it's like a natural. And if you make a special effort to rem remember those very difficult kind of moves, like maybe you have to sacrifice a pawn maybe you have to make a retreating move maybe you have a special plan if you make a kind of mental note i actually have notebooks where i just jot everything down and i try to kind of remember patterns like like this strange a3 move maybe i wouldn't have played it in if i didn't know it but i know i have to cover the b4 square at some point and so i, I flick it in okay so now i want to play da -da -da -da. Just develop my piece. That's what I, I wasn't going to do anything fancy. Oh, I know what I could have done. I'll do it now. <laughs> One move too late. I could have prevented costly by just moving the queen here and then coming to e6 check. But uh, oh well. There's no harm of doing it now. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's really, really good. And uh, very easy to memorize, actually. Quite an interesting kind of system that I have, you know, just rep repeating the position again and again and again. And after the third time you get it wrong, you're like, okay. You have to come up with ways on how to remember things. So I, I like it. Have you checked out the... No, I haven't. I've, um, I'm working through the Dvoretsky Endgame Manual. And also, um, one thing that I do recommend here on Kasparov Chess is if you want to brush up on end games, the, the studies uh, that uh, Maxim Vashilograf talks about is very good. I really do enjoy it. And lots of uh, articles and features that are really to be recommended. And uh, I have to. I started checking out a little bit of the Levonaronian new course that he's just done with Alessio Santoramo. And uh, I really, I didn't know that was the concept that it was like he worked, he just sat down and just said, okay, what do I need to do to become a grandmaster? So um, I think it's the perfect preparation now for before I go to Gibraltar, you know, just watch one of those video, just one video per. Oh, he didn't didn't get to play the smothered mate. Um, and just kind of hear his thinking. So here you go, Jammy. Thirteen minutes. What should I do? Karakhan. No, let's do Scandinavian. What was what was the last match I played? Was um, at the end of October. I played in Riga, and that was the very last classical chess game I played. And uh, other than that, I've just been playing online. I haven't played any, I didn't play in the World Rapid and Blitz. And I've kind of been picking my tournaments, actually. I mean, in fairness, the reason I couldn't play the Rapid and Blitz was because it's over Christmas and I don't think my family would have appreciated it. Um, you know, if I went and played chess rather than visiting them. So, yeah. 
Is it a bottomless pit, Chess? No, 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 no. It's time well spent. It's always time well spent. Nothing that you do is ever a waste of energy. You're learning. You're enjoying. I mean, this is the this is the main thing. You know, even if you lose, like, you go to a tournament, you lose 10 games in a row. At the end of the day, it doesn't quite matter so much. I mean, you know, you're still, you're still good. You're still healthy. Everything's still going well for you. And uh, you still learn a lot and uh, you decide how you're going to shape that experience. Um, I'm quite big on, I've been reading this book by Carol Dweck it's called The Growth Mindset. No, it's called The Mindset. And uh, I really like it. I, I think it's a great, great book. Okay, so I, I can anticipate I'm going to have problems on e -sex. Okay, so I'm going to castle. And uh, that's why I'm a bit reluctant to put my knight on d7 because the knight can come to d4. But I'm okay. I tell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The thing is, though, it might happen to you 10 times in a row that you get checkmated in four. But I can tell you by the 11th time, you're like, no, no, no. It won't happen to me again. So let's put my bishop back. You learn. The brain always learns. That's my belief in life. It's two minutes. And yeah, this is not my good Karakan, I have to say. Well, the only thing going in my favor is that white doesn't have a stake in the center. So small, small achievements. Um, oh no, lucky fritter. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Don't celebrate too early. You know, we have this expression, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And uh, certainly, I, I had a similar kind of situation in one Olympiad. I had this amazing start. I think I got five and a half out of six or something like that. And then I lost. <laughs> I lost like three games in a row. And instead of gaining like 40 rating points, I ended up losing 10 points. And I was like, oh, what? So uh, don't celebrate. You can celebrate after the tournament. You, you can celebrate as much as you like. You can do whatever you want to do. But while you're playing chess in tournaments, Keep your eyes on the prize and be present focused. That's the word that they say. Um, my fritters are never lucky. No, at least you beat an FM. That's true. That is very true. I forgot to highlight that very important point. And then, okay, so hang on. Okay, so da, da, da. Knights in the center of the board, always a good idea. And knight on f4 will never be poor. I just made that one up. Oh, very good. Very good, very good, very good. Now my knight is controlled by a pawn. That's not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play rook a to e8. I'm uh, being very obvious with my intentions. I want to do something in the center. So I either want to play e5, f5. You can guess which one I'm really aiming for. That one. Yay, let's do it. So my idea is to go f4 and open up those dark squares for my bishop. Very good. Very good. You had a calm response there. That was very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take squares. I'm aware. And uh, no, I don't know, Aria, where the James Webb telescope is. Where is it? This backward move of his to go knight to g2 was very good. I didn't anticipate how good it was. OK, 
Okay. The mean girl trio. They control a lot of, lot of squares, so I must not be provoked into advancing them. But I will be. I will be. And now this one comes forward. And okay, let's take those dark squares. So I want to play queen takes h3. It's too beautiful. Um, in the space orbiting around us. Ah, did any of you watch the film? Don't look up. That was an interesting film. <laughs> What's a good opening for beginners? Um, I think actually what I kind of call the copycat, you know, when your opponent plays e4 and you play e5, that's a very, very good uh, opening. What I would, because the, the reason why it's so nice is because you can just develop your pieces in a very natural way. Um, it's slightly more complicated to play the openings like the Karakhan and the French defense and the Sicilian defense because they require, the Sicilian defense requires counterattacking and uh, playing very aggressively with your pieces. Counter uh, the Karakhan and French defense, French defense is a lot more dynamic than the Karakhan um, because you have to deal with this problematic light square bishop. And... Uh, Karakhan, sometimes you're a bit cramped and sometimes you have to deal with the light square bishop being harassed, which can be a bit tricky. But um, e4, e5, you can't go wrong with. And uh, when it comes to playing with the white side, white pieces, um, I would just kind of assess what kind of style you have. Do you like... Um, da, da. Do you like your um, aggressive positions? Do you like your open positions? And uh, you just have to think about that. I mean, if if you like playing, the rule goes like this. And uh, if you like closed positions, where it's more about making a gradual pawn break, then okay, then d4 is your opening of choice. If you prefer like aggressive positions where you get your pieces out and you you have a quite straightforward plan, then do you have to look at playing e4? Oh, sorry, I could call us beans. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm playing and uh, looking over, so sometimes I, I, I miss comments. Chris Evans had a whole 30 seconds. Was Chris Evans in it? I, I, I thought it was a very weird very weird tv m movie but anyway i was just reminding her about that because of the space comment okay so take the center so here you go after all of this the center has been taken it's been a very slow process it's taken me 12 moves but now i have it and now it's not about pushing those pawns forward it's all about just using the space so I'm going to actually fianchetto my bishop because I want to put my bishop on f4. Yeah, <laughs> I do need I do need a lot of monitors at the minute to track everyone's comments. So I'm sorry if I've missed your comments. I do apologize. Um, okay, push the pawn forward and. Uh, 2200, nobody with less than 2200 feet should play the French because the opening depends on too many nuances. Hmm. I mean, I understand his uh, his way of thinking, but I have to say when I was 2200 and I actually, when I was 2400 and over, I, I really struggled to play against the French. Why? Because it was too dynamic. And, you know, as white, I didn't get anything. 
when I tried it with the black pieces, I didn't understand it and I kept getting into trouble. So I'm not sure. I, I don't think I would say 2200. I, I would say seven, um, I would say 1500, but you've got to know your stuff. You've got to know your sacrifices and uh, you've got to know where to put the pieces and the danger. So for instance, in the French defense pawn structure, this light square bishop must never be allowed to play bishop to move itself to d3. Because from the d3 square, it's like the perfect road for an attack. You know, the bishop can take the pawn on h7 and there might be Greek gifts all over the place. So that's why when you when uh, the bishop is allowed to get to d3, it comes at a cost. So, okay, pawn takes bishop. And now, okay, I didn't need to be asked twice. I will take it. Okay, you push on. And the bishop is trapped. So this was quite a, a nice d4 opening. You know, I got the center, the black tried to break, break out, tried to get the light square bishop, but ultimately it didn't work because I had such a strong central pawn. Okay. What can I do? This is my target. Let's take it. And uh, another pass pawn will materialize not far from its destination. Yeah, I agree with all guns ba blazing. You know, just uh, develop your pieces, play Roy Lopez. And uh, it's what's really nice about it is that uh, you have all the top guys playing. And uh, it's just about developing their pieces and uh, be attuned a little bit to the value of your bishops, as especially whether your bishop is better than your opponent's bishop. And, and by that, I kind of mean sometimes does it have more flexibility? I mean, are you going to do a pawn break? And if you are struggling with the opening a little bit, try to make some trades. I, I, I find that people play simplified positions a lot better than positions where you have all the pieces on the board. Uh, London system is good. London system is very, very good. Um, lots of good material online. And uh, also it's very, very difficult to break down. And uh, you grew up, you know, I also grew up with very principled openings and uh, except uh, I was taught the Scandinavian as a kid. And uh, from then I kind of jumped up and played um, the Karakan, and then I, cho I chose to learn the Lopez, but uh, I chose to play the most aggressive line as black, and it was too sharp for me. And there's one game where I played against Nat with the black pieces against Natasha Bojkovic, and she just wiped the floor, and that was it. So, this will be the last game that I take, and I would just I think. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining the chat and just being part of this whole experience. Uh, I've loved every single second of it. Oh, 2443. Okay, you can get the Wesley treatment, um, which is the Bishop C4. Let's try it out, see if I've got a good memory or not. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what does he recommend here? Um, now, this is a sideline. I, I don't remember too much what I have to do. I remember there was something weird. Is this where I put, I put my bishop back on f1? I think it's where I put my bishop back on f1. Ah! Okay, let's not cheat. Put my bishop back on f1 and then attack. Or maybe not. No, it was c3. Hello, what is this Bishop F1 move? <laughs> what am I doing? Um, okay. Okay, whatever. This is like your anchor's version of the bond cloud. Let's pretend. It's, there you go. There we go. We have something of a little hat. Maybe this is my version of the little hat. 
Okay, let's put that there. Yeah, we'll see three. Um, okay. Okay, let's attack this queen. I have to redeem myself after this. <laughs> so, okay. Da, da, da. So, like this. I need to dislodge this knight. It's, it's just horror. It's just horrible. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not even a pawn up. I will take king safety now, any day. C3, queen f2, bishop e2. Okay. Yeah, and that only four prevents white from playing the bond cloud, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now my king will get to f2, so it will be. Okay. Top of queens. I'll pre move bishop takes queen. Mm -hmm. Put my king on. Oh, dear. King here. So bad on every level. Okay, just play a peep, just to play. I don't know what I'm doing. Just giving everything away. Mm. Anyway, let's chat. Can I, yeah? <laughs> let's forget about my position and just just let's just talk and uh yeah i know this is like what on earth is 
what on earth am I doing? It's not something I'm proud of, what's happening here. Anyway, yep. Yes, 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 yes. I have to give up an exchange now. Thank you. Thank you for that. But okay, let's still hold. One minute chess can be a bit random. I have the bishop pair. So I uh, get a real... <laughs> Oh, what a disaster. It's my last game as well. My last game of the night and I do that. It's like, what on earth? Anyway, it is what it is. Where's this extra pawn? This is this extra pawn. So let's prevent it from advancing. That's going to be my goal for today. Stop H5 coming. Anything else? Yes, let's stop H5 coming. And... Let's mobilize. Yeah. And now let's mobilize. Let's go like this, attack this pawn. 58 seconds. You never know what can happen. Always think positively. He might play a Bobby Fischer type move. Bishop takes a2. And now he won't. And... Uh, Let's move my bishop. Let's wait. Huh. Move it back. Thirty-two seconds. Is it really bad that my last game was I'm trying to flag someone? I feel that like that's not quite correct. I've kind of talked about people flagging me, and then like I'm trying to do that to someone hmm hmm okay so let's put the bishop here let's pre-move rook takes rook oh that was not that was not my good good pre-move okay never mind never mind yeah she... <laughs> okay right Let's play this. Eight seconds. Uh, where's the? How do I offer a draw? I'll offer a draw. There you go. I don't want to flag you. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. It wasn't a great game for me to finish. And uh, yeah, sorry about it. I got a bit distracted trying to save the position. And then, um, goodness me. What a tangled web we we <laughs> for ourselves. Um, anyway, I'd just like to thank everyone for tuning in and uh, joining in the chat and just having, I've been having such a great time. And uh, I've enjoyed answering all your questions. And don't forget, you can get a full month of pro access with the code one month free. And uh, Gawain Jones will be writing articles for Vike, uh, well, covering Vike and Say. So do check those out. And uh, well, just enjoy the chess that's available and keep on playing, keep on having fun. And thank you, everyone. And I will see you in the next stream. Bye bye. Have a good one. This is a game uh, I played uh, in 2000 against uh, a very good player, uh, Simbat Lopuchan, was very positional, and uh, this was Armenian champion.